All right, we are live, everybody. Everybody say hello. hello. Welcome to class number one of seven weeks of this brand new course. And hopefully we'll see some folks coming on here and joining us live by way of Facebook. And I want to say as we begin this brand new class um, that um, it is free. And we ask you to share and invite people to come on here with us and enjoy the class together with us. And um, I really believe it's going to be powerful. And if you want official credit, like Kanan, uh, our one of our finest students, <laughs> yes. uh, he has taken, I think, almost every class since course number two. Since course number two. And uh, City Set on a Hill. Yeah. And. Uh, he has been a great student and he has collected credits. Uh, he pays each time $100 for the class. It's free if you just want to view it and audit, as they say. But he has taken it for college credit as well. And so now he is graduating uh, with his credits tomorrow night yes, at uh, EBCS, who we're doing this in cooperation with. And so it's down in Lake Worth. And so uh, congratulations to you, Kanan. Associate's degree. Amen. Hey, good to see you. So uh, as we get started tonight, if you would like to take it for availability to college credit, it is $100 uh, per course uh, for seven weeks. It's total. <laughs> Did I say that right? And, uh, and so you're welcome to, to do it that way. And through EBCS, we can give you college credit. But otherwise, it's free. Enjoy. Share because we're going to talk about some amazing things in this series and uh, we want everybody to be in on it. So tonight, let's get started with class number one of the seven weeks that we are calling wisdom, the principal thing, wisdom, the principal thing. And we have prayed and we are uh, ready to go. We've got more class students coming on in here. Amen. And so get ready. And uh, I, you know what? I forgot to have the downloadable sheets online, but I will get them up there for you. Uh, I'll have to dock my pay. I'm just slipping. <laughs> Check it twice. I just thought about that today. So are we good up here? Is anybody on with us? And please share and, and get some folks on here with us. And I want to also invite those of you that are out there in other nations that have invited me to come. Uh, and now it's been a little difficult to do that. You can get a group together and right here online, uh, get the same thing we're doing in this class every week. So let's take advantage of these times together. All right, so class number one of the seven week course, Wisdom, the Principal Thing. And tonight I wanna talk uh, as an introduction to this series, I want to talk to you about what does the principal thing mean? What does it mean when it says the principal thing? And so get ready to write some notes and, and uh, God may say some things to you that I don't even say. And so we want to definitely remember that. That's the important thing. So let's start with Proverbs, a very familiar Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Principal thing. I think it's interesting to note that every time the scriptures, based almost every time the scriptures talk about thing, it's connected to something. It doesn't have a definition just for thing. Except once or twice, when it makes it clear, it's talking about a thought. So a thought is always connected to something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So your thoughts are not just thoughts. They are connected to something. Mm. So here he says wisdom is the principal thought. Or it's the principal thing. A thought, a word, or an idea coupled to something. I want to go slow because how many of you believe it needs to sink in? <laughs> yes. 
Because there's a lot of things out there. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to take over your thoughts. Mm -hmm. yes. It's some thing. But when it's a principal thing, it's God. So wisdom is the principal thing. Thought, word, idea, coupled to something. Amen. I see some folks coming on here. Everybody say hi to Holly. Hi. Holly is online with us. Now, when it says wisdom is the principal thing, therefore, get it. <laughs> he didn't just kind of casually say, if it's convenient. He said, get wisdom. And all thy getting, get understanding. Now, we're going to cover all these things, but tonight, as I said, it's kind of an introduction. But we're going to talk about the principal thing. Because before we can get into wisdom, we've got to talk about that it's principal. It's the principal thing. So in all thy getting. Notice he didn't say in all thy getting, get knowledge. Did he? He said, you better get some understanding for the knowledge. A lot of knowledge of, knowledge of, hello. <laughs> Can't hardly order these through the mail anymore. <laughs> That's all. I tell you, my dad used to always say stuff like that. Anyway, you, he, we need to understand that wisdom is the principal thing with all thy wisdom, get understanding. So let's first of all define wise. Wise. Wise is, is specific to wisdom. Wise and wisdom are the same thing, but they are two different parts. And again, we're giving the introduction, the, the foundation tonight. Is anybody excited? Yes. Man, I sure am. To be wise, you see the Hebrew word there, is to be skillful. To be wise is to be skillful. But wisdom, and you see the Hebrew word there, is more of the character. Wisdom is the character or the lifestyle. To be wise is in a certain thing. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. The Greek word I think is interesting is the word Sophia. So if you named your baby yeah. Sophia, so, she's wise. In Istanbul, a huge temple which has now been taken over by the Arabs, uh -huh. they, call, they call it the Sophia. Really? Mm -hmm. Sophia or Sophia? Well, we call it Sophia. It was my grandmother's name. Okay. So they call that Sophia. They're trying yeah, to call it the wise place. I'd have to look it up at the rest. It's very important. The Greek word is Sophia or Sophia. Mm -hmm. Meaning character. Mm. We can be wise, skillful, but it has to come out of wisdom that is character. Yes. Amen. Talk loud, though, so people can hear. Um, the difference between wise and wisdom is kind of like um, when somebody's very smart, book smart, they yep. have no common sense. Right. right. The book smart is the wise, the common sense is the wisdom. Well, the book smart can just be knowledge. Yeah. Right. Yes. And maybe, maybe it doesn't have anything to do with wisdom at all. Mm -hmm. This is why people can read the same book and get something different out of it. Can, it, can I say something here? Sure. My yeah, wife. Come on. Sometimes. I want to do this. Well, they've been probably watching me in there. <laughs> but... I think sometimes what happens is that the world gives us knowledge. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's good. I mean, when we go through elementary and high school and college, mm -hmm. we learn things that we should do to operate in the world system. But what we really need to have is the wisdom and the knowledge. Of course, it's good to have knowledge. But if we're just getting knowledge, when you listen to things coming to us with information, we got to decipher that because yeah, we're gonna it doesn't that. sometimes have any wisdom, yeah. but it has a lot of knowledge. Yeah. And you can have a lot of knowledge and no character. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And we're going to, we're going to kind of 
get into all of that because this is all part of wisdom. Well, you guys are way ahead of me. I like it. That's great. No, it's great. Uh, so we can dismiss class now. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. So again, just to kind of, I want to go slow because I want this to be a foundation that we set the rest of it because we're going to get into some stuff as you can probably imagine. And, and it's going to take us to an, a different level of wisdom than maybe we've discussed. Uh, amen. So I see another student coming out. Do you believe? So here we go. I can see from afar. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Great to have you. So let's look at this. Wise is to be skillful. Wisdom is literally talking more about the character. The Greek word is Sophia. Proverbs 1 7, you see there on your sheet. I just did part A for time. The fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of knowledge. Now, later on uh, in another scripture, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So what is it talking about here? What comes first, knowledge or wisdom? Wisdom. I was thinking about wisdom being the principal thing. Ah, wisdom is the principal thing, but knowledge comes first. But it would sound like exactly what uh, Judith is saying. It would sound like, wait a minute, wisdom should come first. But knowledge comes first. How? Notice it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So knowledge is not the principal thing. But knowledge has to become, if you will, the vessel. We're going to get a little more into this. I know it sounds a little funny right now, but but the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So the fear of the Lord is also the beginning of wisdom. So look at this sentence here, next line down. You may know or acknowledge what you have. But the why comes from wisdom. So if I can say this, I, I really, and tell me if I'm being clear. But in other words, the principal thing is the why, not the what. There's going to be a lot of what's that happen in your life, but it's not the principal thing. We're going to look for the why. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we may acknowledge something, but that doesn't mean it gave us the reason. Right. What? I said I know that's right. Yeah. But with every what, we must know the why. Again, this is introduction. As we go through the weeks, it'll become uh, either clearer or muddier. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right. So Proverbs 9.10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Now we're going to we're going to discuss three principles tonight. I am so excited. We've got coffee on. We've got good looking students out here who could ask for anything. And I got a wonderful wife. And a place to meet. How many of you know we're blessed? And I didn't mean to put coffee first. but Okay. So let's talk about the principal thing before we get into wisdom. Although talking about the principal thing, we will get into wisdom. Amen. So let's talk about the principal, the principalities, and the principles. Right there on your sheet. We're going to start with the principle. What does that mean? The Hebrew word is reset or reset, meaning first beginning. Now, this is why knowledge is not first in this regard, because knowledge is not always the original. 
It came out of the original. So it's the first, the beginning, the original, the chief, and look at this. The principle is the authorized absolute. When we say we're living by the principles of the kingdom, we say we're living by the absolutes. Everything else must change. Oh, come on, somebody. That was what we're coming out to class for right there. I mean, it's an absolute. God says it's an unmovable kingdom. And this is why, because we're living in the principal thing. So wisdom is defined as the process of perfecting to a principle that produces understanding. You know me, I got to be cutesy. It's what's under your standing. We should be standing on firm, solid ground. The rock. Amen. So my standing under what's under my standing is. The rock. Amen. The principle. So wisdom is defined as the process of perfecting to a principle that produces understanding. Now, so what's produced your understanding lately? Hopefully it's not the news. We don't even hardly watch it. We don't watch it anymore, do we? At all. We keep it up on the Internet, maybe. But... Uh, you know, and that's not to say you shouldn't or can't out there. Hi there, Ariel is on. Amen. But what's giving you your understanding? About the current situation. What's giving us our understanding? We really have to ask ourselves that question. But wisdom is defined. I'm going to repeat it the third time. As the process of perfecting to a principle that produces our understanding. So Proverbs 24, 3 says, through wisdom is what? A house builded or cultivated. Through wisdom. So wouldn't that say that wisdom is a process? I want wisdom and I want it right now. Well, you want it for something. And God says, no, it's not a what first, it's a why. Yeah, it's a process. Wisdom's going to unfold. You might want to write that word down. It's going to unfold. Wisdom's not going to give you the whole enchilada, to use a Mexican term. It's, it's going to get, not going to give you the whole enchilada. It's going to unfold. <laughs> A chalupa. <laughs> oh, now they're hungry. Okay. So, through wisdom is a house cultivated. And, well, look at this. By understanding, it's established. So, whatever it is we're understanding is going to be what we're established in. If our understanding is wrong, we're on sand. If our understanding through process is set, we're on the rock. So wisdom is, oh, look at this on your sheets. The wisdom is the, the discerner, the dissector, and then the applicator and activator. It listens more than it speaks. Because wisdom is processing. If somebody says, hey, I can't help it. I just say what comes to my mind. That's just the way I am. No, it means that you don't tap into wisdom. Because wisdom will cause you to save yourself a lot of heartache. Oh, yeah. Amen. How many of you are glad you didn't say some things you wanted to say? And at the time, you just knew you had to say it. Wisdom prevented it because wisdom said, let's check this out. Now, I'm not saying we always successful at that. No. <laughs> I know you were going to say that. Wisdom is a discerner. It dissects. Then it's an applicator. It, it, it applies application to the knowledge. 
Hmm. This is learning. Yeah. And then it's an activator. And then it's an activator. Yeah. But see, we want it to activate now. God, give me wisdom and give it to me now. I need to know what to do. And God is asking you, no, you need to know why to do it. But I, I thought I, it's because I want to do it. That should be my why. Yeah, but do you know why you want to? I don't know about you, but I'm pretty, are we all pretty spiritual in here? <laughs> Come on, you can say it. Well, I don't want to brag. No, but are we all pretty spiritual? I hope so. Well, do, do, do any of us allow the flesh sometimes to creep up? I'm not going to ask for hands. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, every now and then it still slips through. You know, still, whoa, what did I just say to traffic? Don't say anything. Don't say anything. I mean, that's She's But then what happens is regret. Why did I say that? Now notice we say why after what? Yeah. We put what first, then we say why did I do that? It's kind of late to ask why. Does that make sense? So we we have to say, God, help me to live. If you want to write this down, help me to live a principled life. Now, a principled life is different than a disciplined life. Help me to live a principled life. Principled? Yes. P-A-L. Help me to live a principal life. Yes. Oh, I thought you said so. So, principle is different than discipline. Because discipline comes out of principle. Some people are trying, well, that sun's come right in my face. Um, hi, everybody. <laughs> the sun is slowly setting and suddenly appeared. I, I saw the light. <laughs> All right. So, <clears throat> you see, <laughs> folks. <laughs> hi, hon. Whoa, that was a lot of light. Discipline has to come out of principle. Otherwise, <laughs> discipline. Yeah. Otherwise, discipline will become a task. Yes. I would say that discipline can become a sacrifice. Oh, <laughs> I see my big face on there. Um, <laughs> That they, it's okay. That 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 discipline can become a so self-serving sacrifice, mm -hmm. and we know that that comes from a self-righteous mm -hmm. um, indication. Yeah. So we need to use wisdom when we are being disciplined because we try to discipline ourselves, but really, God wants to do the discipline. Yes, yes. That's so true. It boils down to wisdom is God doing it and discipline is man. Yeah. Another thing yes. along with that is discipline thing. is it's always going to be a what. And principle is the why. So how many of you have made resolutions in the new year? Nope. And I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this and then not do it. It's because you didn't really have an understanding of the why. It was more of a what. I know this is kind of elementary to start with, but how many of you know it's deep? <laughs> so this is very important to understand. This is why he says that understanding establishes the house. Wisdom is a discerner, a dissector, then an applicator, and then an activator that listens more than it speaks. In our prayer life, I can tell you at least what I have found is you should listen more than you yeah. speak. Mm -hmm. Amen. I used to go to prayer meetings at some churches uh, years ago, and it was so much talking and so many people telling God. 
And not so much. And money. and and all different places. And it seemed that this is spiritual. When really I come to find out, wait a minute, uh, maybe we're doing too much talking. Maybe before we talk, we ought to listen. So to me, I, I love also being in those, and I love when we speak and all that in prayer meetings, but what I'm saying is that we should listen more than we speak. Absolutely. All right, so the only true source of wisdom is God. And I thought I'd see here, big amen on that. <laughs> The only true source of wisdom is God, revealed by unfolding the mystery of his word. So wisdom and mystery go hand in hand. Wisdom and mystery go hand in hand. So when we, when we, and again, this is just introduction, but when we talk about wisdom is literally wise dominion. Mm -hmm. It's just as the kingdom is the king's dominion. Wisdom is the dominion of the wise. This is why we need to live a principled life. It's more of a life given all the Yes, absolutely. It has to be a lifestyle. It has to become a lifestyle. Are we good so far? Yes, sir. Any questions or comments? Don't hold back. <laughs> All right. So that is the principal thing. And again, we'll be talking about this through the weeks uh, as it being the first, the beginning, the original, the chief, the authorized absolute. Now, out of the word principle is the word principality. So let's go to number two. <laughs> Oh, hold on to your seats, folks. Principalities. We automatically think, oh, the evil stuff. But principality in and of itself is not evil. It just depends on who's ruling it. Principalities is the Greek word arch. It means an arch. To rule in high places of government. Or when it becomes evil, it's illegal rule by demons. Wow. Letting it sink in. Now, does anybody see anything in the word? Well, no, I don't want to get that far yet. Principalities in and of themselves, as again, is not evil. It's what's ruling it. Because in another scripture, I don't think I have it on here. It says, pray for uh, principalities and magistrates. What that simply means is those that are in governmental authority. But when it becomes evil is when it's illegal rule. That's because it. God likes order yeah. Yeah. One of the angels is called the archangel, right? Yes. So he's called the principal angel. So principalities, uh, when it becomes a problem, is when it's illegal rule. This is why, and we heard Apostle mention this uh, in his, in our service Whatever it was, was it Saturday or Sunday? Anyway, <laughs> I know. I'm kind of getting adjusted to everything here. Ephesians six twelve. he brought this up. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. How many of you know we don't need to wrestle anymore anyway? But we are standing against principalities and powers. Now that must be the evil rule. That must be the illegal rule. Against powers, against the rulers of darkness or ignorance in this world. Against spiritual wickedness, where? In high places. Now, a person could say, wait a minute, when it's talking about the illegal rule of demons and the devil, Satan, how can it be called a principality? If principality means first. Because of Colossians. 
the next scripture. <laughs> Chapter 1 and verse 16. For by him were all things, what? Created. created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or what? Principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. So wait a minute. Even though it's an illegal principality, demons were not always demons. They were angels. God created them. How many of you know he even created Lucifer? Yes. If you will, put it that way. In other words, though Lucifer took and made an illegal principality, he didn't start something that wasn't created first. He has never created anything. Oh, isn't that something? The devil has never had an original thought. He has, he has copied everything he's ever done. And so he has an illegal, if you will, if you want to write this word too, counterfeit principality. It's a counterfeit principality. Still created by God. Still created by God for him. But now the devil who thinks he's successfully had a hostile takeover will have to give it back. Now, you can't have a principality. I've left you a little room to write notes, I think, right? You can't have a principality without territory. So write down the word territory. So the enemy has to have territory to operate his illegal counterfeit principality. Oh, boy. Colossians 2.15, having spoiled principalities and powers, Jesus that is, spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. In other words, he already spoiled or made spoil of or brought down the principalities and powers that were counterfeit. And now all the enemy has to operate on is deception. To deceive and blind people because he knows now his time is short. Oh, help me, Lord. Yeah, because Jesus came and spoiled, made spoil of the illegal principalities and powers by bringing the original government. Wow. Now. Sin no longer, I didn't put this scripture on here, but you know it in Romans. Sin no longer has dominion over me. So the devil can't claim me as territory. So he has no territory over me. Therefore, he has no principality over me. The principality I operate in is the kingdom. Legal. Absolute. Come on, somebody. But the enemy's hoping will not know that. The more he can make you think he has some way of ruling over you, he feels like he is one. But the moment we have a revelation through the wisdom of God, that is the principal thing, it takes us back to the fact that God has already freed us from any power of the enemy. I practice this when I've been confronted with the enemy in a way that I can recognize. Yeah. I'm just standing. Mm hmm. Now, can I say that? She just brought up standing. Yeah. Apostle brought that up Saturday, right? Yeah. Having done all to stand, stand. stand. 
Thank you. Honey. Now, what does he mean by stand? He means you are absolute, unmovable in principle. And you recognize the enemy has no power over you. Has no power. So I'm not wrestling any longer with principalities and powers. I'm standing. And I'm not just standing against. I'm standing for the kingdom. Woo! It is a big difference. Because then you're advancing. Yes. And you know what else? Standing. Because I, I think I used to think standing was passive. But it's mm. No. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. It's aggressive. Mm -hmm. We are standing forward. Yes. In an advanced posture. And see, the thing is. Your your yeah. Amen. The thing is, you're not just standing for you. You've taken territory back for God. Amen. So that now you can go get territory for him out there. Hallelujah. Have you ever seen, uh, you know the joy when you see the light bulb come on when people realize, hey, I'm more than a conqueror. How many of you know that little light bulb that comes on? It's like, you know, whoa, I've been taking it on the chin too long. <laughs> Wait a second, this puny little devil has already been defeated? I knew it, I just didn't know I knew it. <laughs> but once the light comes on, then the mystery begins to unfold. Wow. All right, so he spoiled principalities and powers. So religion, man-made philosophies, and Satan have no jurisdiction governmentally at all. None, except what you give him. This is why he says, neither give place. We talked about place on Tuesday night. Neither give any place to the devil. Because that's, because we have the authority, when we give place, we're giving something. Yeah, we're yielding. Actually, get outside of the principles. Yeah. We don't stand. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Now, this brings us to the number three, and then we're going to have a great roundtable discussion. We talked about the principle that brought us to understanding the principalities, bringing us to number three, the principle. You say, well, aren't we repeating uh, one of these? <laughs> no. The principles is the Greek word. I can't pronounce it. Exachi. I think it's exachi. Now here, what this word principle means, because you have to, when it says principle in the Bible, it doesn't always mean the same thing. It has different definitions for its meaning. So here principles are literally talking about the peak. Or the highest. Mm -hmm. Your eminence. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what they say to like important people, kings and those kind of things. Your eminence. Here's, are you ready for this? The principle here, we're actually talking about the prince. Mm -hmm. Or the anointed one. Literally, we are the king's anointed. Whoa, 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 somebody he is getting it. Mm. See, not only do we have principles and we know now how to deal with the principalities, but we are the principles. We are the king's anointed. We are the original blueprint. We are the original design. We are the first fruits of the kingdom. You know how they say you are the principal in a certain document or property mm -hmm. or something. Mm. Principles. It's very good. Principles yeah. We're we have to, to sign our name. Yes. Amen. So we are representatives of the, you know, we can shout in class. It won't disturb me a bit. We are representatives of the highest government. We are authorized sphere in a sphere of influence. 
We have been authorized by the author of the principle who says, I'm the peak. <laughs> we are principles of God's kingdom. The first fruits of his kingdom manifestation. Wow, 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 somebody. This is why it, don't look for discipline. You know, I'm going to try to read five scriptures every night. I'm going to discipline myself. Why don't you look for principles and then guess what? You want to That's have more. Right. And right. discipline will be no problem. We are the principles. God wants you to get in touch with who you really are. What you've been purposed to be, that DNA designation as an original of his blueprint. So that then you live out that life as his principle. First fruits of his kingdom manifestation. Amen. So it says in James 1.18, of his own will, he begat us. Begat he us. In other words, he birthed us with the word of truth. Truth is the principle that we should look at this be, you know, the scripture, a kind of first fruits. You can interchange first fruits with principle of the original design. We could be a kind of first fruits of his creation. Jesus was the firstborn. How many of you believe he exhibited the kingdom? Yes. He manifested the kingdom. Now he says we're a kind of first fruits of the firstborn. So Ephesians 3, 10 and 11. To the intent that now. Ooh, help me, Jesus. I'm going to come out of my chair. <laughs> to the intent that now look. Unto the principalities and powers in heavenly realms might be known by the church. We spot them. You're legal or you're illegal. That's good. That's very good. Because I'm the church. I am the ecclesia. I am the embassy of the kingdom of God. I am an ambassador. I am a principal. Might be known by the church, the manifold, multifaceted, if you want to put that word next to it, multifaceted wisdom of God. According to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And he says that eternal purpose that he purposed in him has now been purposed in us. Amen. Second Corinthians 520. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. We are principles for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead with the same authority, the same unmovable absolute. Be ye set back in line with God. Reconciled. We need to begin to walk in our authority as principles of the kingdom of God. We had to talk about the principles as an introduction mm -hmm. before we get into the more of the wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so I pray this is, yes, we're going to have our round table discussion. I got a feeling we're going to have a good one. Yes. Lisa down there is going, whoa, let me think. <laughs> and we love all of you out there on Facebook. And we did have a good room. Please share this video when it's posted and recorded. And what do we say to everybody? To, to the, the king. king.